think I'd start a presentation showing a picture of Donald Trump, though. Uh, so this is a first for me. Uh, but this is what's going on in the United States, and this is what every, everyone talks about Brexit over here, everyone talks about Donald Trump uh, in the States. What's going on? Well, we have a president of the United States that takes to Twitter quite often. So he tweets quite a bit, and we all love Twitter as a social media uh, engagement tool, but when your president's taking to Twitter, I rather think of him now as somewhat of a twit. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. <laughs> Uh, we have a 36% uh, approval rating for the current president, which is quite low and continues to get lower as the weeks pass, um, as he has started. We have uh, all kinds of theories about uh, colluding with the Russians. Uh, we have pretty low expectations, I would say, at this point of what's going on. However, the stock market is absolutely soaring. And the economy is in a pretty good place. In terms of overall economy, we have the strongest economy that we've had in almost 10 years. So it's pretty great. We have very low unemployment rates, some of the lowest in 10 years. And gas prices are low, um, much lower than over here. In relative terms, they are lower than they've been in many, many years. Interest rates are low, and inflation is very low. And all of this leads us to improvement in consumer confidence um, and leaving consumers with more cash to spend. So a good time to be uh, marketing in the US. This is some information that we gathered from holiday of 2016 in terms of November and December specifically. And what you'll see is online and digital, which has kind of been a theme for many of our speakers today, tends to continue to be a winner in this space. If you look online and other non-store uh, retail up uh, 12 to 13% during holiday, so continues to grow double digits. There were some other clear winners, and then there were some uh, categories that didn't fare quite as well during holiday. If you take a look um, at health and personal care, uh, fared pretty well during the holiday. Furniture, and um, one of our first speakers uh, with furniture offer um, this morning, furniture did pretty well. Uh, clothing, unlike what Ben presented uh, to you all the, just uh, before lunch, Clothing seems to be doing well in the UK. It's struggled a bit. Apparel and the clothing sector has struggled a bit in the US in recent years and continued to struggle during holiday, up not even 1%, um, but yet better than some of the other categories, as you'll see. Um, general merchandise, gifting has been down, uh, sporting goods, et cetera, has been down. So it's not a rosy picture across all categories, um, but a pretty good picture overall. So I would like to share some key insights with you into to consumers in the US. Their consumer, their shopping habits have changed. We are shifting our spend into categories and channels like never before. So we'll talk about digital. Everyone's now spending more time on their mobile phones and different devices, and they're actually making purchases from those devices as well. But they're also spending in different ways. Um, sort of when I, we looked at that category, of how the different categories are doing. A lot of the consumers are spending on travel, on entertainment. They're actually saving more of their dollars as well. But the good news is they will spend if they see something that is of interest to them. So I think Joanna was talking about getting personalized and more relevant with your offers and really speaking. Uh, to the consumer, if you are relevant and personalized and put an offer in front of them at the right time, through the right channel, they're going to engage with your brand. There's a lot of changes in promotional strategies, and I think Ben was mentioning um, you know, Black Friday during his presentation. Black Friday really got extended last year um, in the US. They started having Black Friday sales almost a month prior uh, to actual Black Friday. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. So the, it's really extending that cycle. But what it's doing is it's training the US consumer to look for sales. So everything is more promotional. Folks are buying when they get a deep discount, and they're buying when they have free shipping as well. 
customers want and will demand more of your uh, attention. They want discounts from you for the most part, but they also want that full service omni experience. So if they're walking into a store versus getting a targeted web ad, you know, possibly served through our, our sister company Conversant, uh, they want that to be seamless and they want it to be the same type of offer regardless of what the channel is that they're, they prefer to shop in. Online continues to grow. This is sort of the theme. Um, consumers are buying more frequently, but they aren't spending as much of an average order in general as what we're seeing uh, at any given time. And you really have to understand who your consumer is, age, ethnicity, personal preferences. So data beyond just what you may know about these consumers, really understanding that full 360 degree view of who they are, what they prefer, where they like to shop, um, is going to be important and have implications on how they purchase. So getting a deep understanding of this information is going to be key. Consumers are still going into retail stores. So as much as we've had this big shift into online shopping, they are not abandoning the traditional retail store. Um, the Amazon effect is, is quite staggering, whether you have decided to partner with Amazon or not partner with Amazon. There's a definite effect and an impact on consumers in the US and how they're shopping, I think, uh, everywhere. So you're going to have to really deepen your relationships with your customers to really gain their loyalty. And you're going to have to be where they are and at the right time, as I said. We do something similar in the US to what uh, Ben was sharing earlier, the trend report. And this is just uh, a highlight from the US trend report for the catalog online and retail sectors uh, in the US from a Q4 versus a 2016 comparison. In Q4, sales were down slightly. It wasn't the end of the world. It's not uh, that shoppers have gone away altogether, but they aren't spending to quite the level that they had been spending. Sales were down about 1%. Um, again, I mentioned this attributed to 2% lower, um, what we call AOV, is that a term you use here too? Good, um, average order values. Um, but an increase in purchase frequency slowed those sales declines. If you look at 2016 overall, it was pretty flat. And we like to say in the US now that a flat is the new up. Uh, so we're, we're pretty happy with flat. Um, a 2% increase in purchase frequency was offset by those lower AOVs and a slight decline in the number of households that are shopping. So, you know, to note, but again, flat, if flat's the new up, we're, we're in good shape. We look at things by what we call super category uh, in the US across the Abacus Alliance. And these are some of the different categories that um, we looked at. This will give you, again, a 12 month snapshot versus Q4. You can see for, for the full 12 months, clothing um, up almost 1%. Uh, for both adult um, and children's and teen clothing. Uh, fashion accessories and beauty down slightly for the year, but flat in Q4. Gifts has really been hit hard. So the category, if you're a gift uh, mailer or marketer, this has been a tougher category, and you will have to have unique product and really be able to stand out and get that relevant messaging and personalization um, to drive your offer to stand out from the others. Hobbies and interests down just slightly and home and garden flat. So that's just at a very high level what some of the categories uh, have going on from an abacus co-op perspective in the US. And what is on the mind of many of our marketers is how to target different groups of consumers. So instead of talking to one homogenous group of consumers in the US, really understanding how do you target that big and growing group of millennials is that an issue for some of you in the UK as well? Yes? Good. Um, and then targeting seniors. Also a very big population and a growing population of how to target, you know, we actually looked at boomers plus, we don't want to call them seniors because 55 seems too young, as Lara said, <laughs> to refer to ourselves uh, in that manner. But this is really important, and they don't all shop alike. You can't target millennials as one group. 
So in the US, we've gotten, uh, we've done some research in the past uh, uh, probably nine months around these two categories. What we found is that there are many stages of targeting within the millennial groups and, and the seniors groups. Um, and I'm not going to, I won't read all these to you, but my favorite one is hashtag, but first let me take a selfie, is one of the, um, <laughs> one of six segments that we came up with of how to target millennials. So if you are thinking about coming into the US, don't take a selfie now. Yeah. <laughs> if you are thinking about coming into the U.S. Um, and marketing into the U.S., and this is a target group of consumers for you, we can help you figure out how to message them differently because they all aren't the same, even though demographically they're very similar. Same thing uh, with the study that we did around the Boomers Plus uh, age is an attitude is the study that we called it, and came, we came up with four distinct groups of consumers between the ages of 50 and 69 and ages 70 plus. Um, again, if you are targeting this uh, demographic or group of consumers as you come into the U.S., we can help you get more specific with your targeting. Um, so you don't talk to them all in the same way. And they have different abilities uh, to spend as well. So that's pretty important is how much disposable income they have to be able to spend on your, your offer. So one of the things Laura asked me to provide were some, some considerations if you are considering marketing and, and launching your businesses into the U.S. We have for many years struggled with the United States Postal Service. Uh, I am on the marketing committee of the ACMA, the Association of Catalog Mailers um, in America, and we have been fighting postal legislation and fighting increases in postage rates for many, many, many years. For the first time heading into 2017, we didn't get a big postage increase. So postage right now is actually favorable. In some classes of mail, it's actually declined. Uh, depending on the offer that you're mailing. So that's very good news for us and something that's changed uh, that we've been fighting for for a long time. Direct mail is growing in the United States. Direct mail is a channel that is not dead. This is not just evidenced by many of our multi-channel merchant uh, customers or brands that we work with in the U.S. There are over 300 what we considered pure plays, previously considered pure plays, so they only had a presence on the web. So no brick and mortar, didn't mail a catalog, didn't mail anything, is, is what this group is, that have now put catalogs or direct mail pieces together and are actively mailing and mailing profitably to acquire new customers in the United States. Um, so I will, Laura, I think, mentioned it as well. Direct mail is alive. It's not growing double digits, but it is in a growth mode in the U.S. Amazon. This is on the mind of every brand that I talk to. Do I work through Amazon and give them all my margin? Do I not work through Amazon and possibly miss out on a channel where my competitors are? You're going to have to really evaluate what's the best strategy for you as you look into what you're going to do here. But the number one thing I want you to know is you have to have a strategy. You're either in or you're out and figure out what that means for your brand. The Internet of Things. So um, I do not have Alexa at home myself. Uh, my son has a Google Home. Have you, have you seen those? So the only, it's the same type of thing. Uh, the only thing he uses it for is to listen to his music, and I don't know what, how that's different than a speaker. Um, or, your, or your mobile phone. I paid $150 for him to have artificial intelligence in his room, and he listens to music through it. So we, too, have not figured out how uh, to monetize our investment here. But it's all, it's what everyone's talking about, that artificial intelligence, machine learning, how this is going to transform uh, what consumers do, um, very top of mind for consumers in the U.S. We have a lot of lists available uh, in the U.S., many, many more than are available um, over here. There are multiple data cooperatives. Um, Abacus is the first. We were the pioneer in the space. 
and we continue to be the largest uh, in this space. But as you're looking at you know, coming in, if there are specific rental lists and very niche lists that you need, uh, we can help you know, even guide you in that direction as you're thinking about that. And we do have someone in the US who's really dedicated to helping the UK marketers come in um, within, that works within Abacus. List rental costs are cheaper than they are over here. Um, so that's positive as well. This is critical. If you have an offer that is not unique, it does not resonate uh, with the consumers over here, it's probably not over there. This is the number one thing we talk to our, uh, the brands that we work with about is standing out. There's a lot of clutter, not just in the mailbox, there's just a lot of noise. And every time you go on the internet now, you're getting you know, the banner ads, you're getting inundated with advertising and marketing as you walk into stores, everywhere you go. If you don't have a unique selling proposition, you won't stand out and get consumers to convert to your brand. Adapting the catalog is pretty easy. Um, there are consultants that can help you do this as well, but oftentimes just changing vernacular um, from pullover to jumper, uh, I, I don't, my vernacular is bad. I'm, I'm US, so, uh, but you know, getting those words right. I sent Lara my presentation um, probably five times and she kept sending it back going, that's not what we say here. <laughs> that's not how we spell it here. Um, so it's pretty easy though, um, but utilize somebody that's got expertise in it. Make sure your website um, has US dollars or you have a version of your website that does. You know, go speak the language as you're marketing uh, into the US. And be open to testing. Don't make assumptions that what's working here and what offers working here, what creative's working here is the same thing that's going to work over there. Be open to testing and do a lot of it so you can learn and figure out what's going to work. Shipping from the UK is not overly difficult either. Um, again, with postage rates um, going, staying flat or potentially going down, it's a good time to be mailing in. And we love UK brands. The US loves brands from the UK. These are just uh, a handful of mailers that we've successfully worked with over the years um, that are mailing into the US. Again, I bet those brands would be happy to share their experiences with you as well. This is just a quick case study. Are you familiar with the brand Bonobos? Yes? Um, this was uh, what I would have considered one of those pure play e-tailers. Um, wanted to expand what they were doing online by uh, utilizing direct mail. They came to us, to, they created a catalog. They utilized Abacus, and some of you may be familiar with our Abacus One methodology. Um, they utilized that. And we built look-alike models, as we often do, uh, to help them find new customers. We outperformed. Uh, they, they tested multiple data providers. We were able to outperform them. They saw almost a 3% increase in response rate, which, which they were thrilled with, which translated into a 2 to 1 return on ad spend. Uh, this complements now what they've got. We call them pop-up stores in the US. You know, they aren't full retail year round. They pop them up every now and again. So now they are true multi-channel marketers doing online catalog and have these pop-up retail stores. So a great success story um, from the US. And instead of listening to me tell you uh, about our successes in the US, we have a fabulous uh, video testimonial from one of our clients, Just Fab, that was a pun intended. Um, Just Fab, who is an online, was an online only e-tailer in high fashion merchandising. So I thought I would leave you with that. My name is Monica Deritich. I'm the VP of Marketing for Just Fab North America. Uh, we're under the textile fashion group. Just Fab is a leading fashion e-commerce uh, subscription brand that delivers a personalized shopping experience to our customers. Uh, we worked with Epsilon for going on two plus years and 
We've seen great success uh, specifically within uh, acquiring new customers, which is definitely one of our most important initiatives um, as a growing brand and company. We've leveraged their Abacus One model and have found great success with our direct mail program and prospecting. Our customer lifetime value is higher than customers acquired through other paid media channels. I've learned a lot based on uh, what Amy, our account rep, has uh, shared with us and new ways to look at data and how we can use it to then target and uh, convert new customers. We're very excited to be working with Epsilon and are looking to uh, bring their abacus model and other solutions through Epsilon to our other in-house brands and are looking forward to a great partnership in the future. Since uh, she gave us this gracious video testimonial, they had been testing uh, conversant targeted display advertising um, as well in the U.S. and have since um, seen such a good return that they're now augmenting uh, what they're doing with us um, with conversant solutions as well.